Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. I just wanted to show you a pair of ball pythons real quick and talk a little bit about our breeding season so far. I just introduced uh, the males to the females for this session, I guess, of breeding, this go-round, about five minutes ago. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, this guy is within an inch of a lock. I would guess that as long as I close him up here in a minute and uh, move away, he will just immediately lock her up. So, uh, by the way, what you're seeing here is a female desert ghost named Hari and a male Super Orange Dream Ultramel named Prince Dreamy. And we are going for Orange Dream Double Hats. Anyway, um, breeding ball pythons is the the primary thing we do at the reptile barn but uh, of course we breed other things as well but as far as the ball python season goes we haven't we haven't really followed on the vlog this year as much as we normally do so I wanted to chat really quick um, we a couple of I guess rules of thumb that we use instead of having a specific season we tend to wait until our females are at the right size and then we pair them no matter what time of year it is so it's, it's year-round breeding um, it means that we get clutches year-round and hatchlings year-round we like that of course a lot of them it ends up being um, during the same you know the winter months they breed the best many of our females are kind of on that schedule anyways but it's not on purpose on our part let's see if anyone else has made any progress yet yet. So this is a citrus ghost, a gene that basically nobody works with, <laughs> and this is a cinnamon mahogany pied male. Uh, and they've locked many times. I expect them to lock at some point this evening. But uh, anyway, so that's what we worry about with our females, and you know, we're usually aiming for 1500 grams. If they're a little bit smaller than that, but they're absolutely plowing food, sometimes we'll start pairing them a little bit earlier than that, but not much. Our males, um, we usually do inter start introducing males fairly small, four or 500 grams, uh, but we don't really expect a bunch of great locks at that size. We just, we have noticed in our collection, this may not carry over to everybody, but in our collection, no matter what size our males are, the first month or two that we're trying to pair them with females, we don't get very many locks from them. So we figure start them a bit earlier than we actually need the locks, and then by the time the locks are the most important for the female, uh, the male is kind of in the groove and he's got his, his hormones up and he's ready to go. So we start our males a little small, but usually by six or 700 grams, they're actually locking a bunch. And that's, of course, you know, a first year male. By the time they're experienced, um, they're going to be larger than that anyways, right? In their third year, fourth year of breeding and everything after that. So... Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people worry so much about the size that their ball pythons need to be. And that is definitely important. We want to be healthy and safe for our snakes. Um, but there's not a one size fits all <laughs> kind of deal, right? I'll show you another pair. Nothing yet. This is another, oh, although she's uh, peed and pooped back there. You'll notice sometimes the females make a huge mess when you introduce a male. They're trying to put out smells, basically, that will entice the male. And this guy has locked her up a lot, too. So this is another desert ghost female. Her name is Shiara. This male is named Lava Gold. He is an orange dream pinstripe spot nose clown. Uh, we got this from Brad Boa, the female we produced here. Uh, I also expect them to lock up. We, we're having really good success this year. Usually 80 or 90% of the pairs that we put together each week or each 10 days or however long between ends up actually locking. For us, that's good. I know some people do better than that, but for us, that's really good. Um, anyway, you can see this male is dwarfed by this female. She's, you know, 2,800 grams or so, 3,000 grams, and he's not. <laughs> he's like 600 grams about. So, um, another trick, another thing I wanted to bring up. We keep almost all of our males, other than our absolute best eaters, but pretty much all of our males, 
we keep on live mice during the breeding season, whatever the breeding season for them is. Uh, and the reason that we do that is because they will spend a longer time continuing to eat into the breeding season before they finally start fasting. If they're on frozen thawed, especially frozen thawed rats, they tend to go off of food a lot sooner and then they start to lose weight sooner and then I have to pull them from the breeding regime sooner. Does that, does that make sense? So if I keep them on live mice, which is their favorite thing to eat, right? Other than, you know, African soft furs or gerbils, but I don't, I don't do those outside of an emergency. But uh, if they're on live mice, they're going to stay on a good eating regime for far longer. Uh, anyways, this right here is a pastel GHI het desert ghost. Her name is Cindy Lou Who. And this is Bravestone. He is a Mojave yellow belly desert ghost. Um, this girl is about 1,400 grams. This is only her second time ever being paired with a male. They, didn't pa they did not lock last time. Um, so sh this will be her first ever breeding season, just starting basically right now, which is kind of exciting. A pastel yellow belly Mojave GHI desert ghost would be the, the all gene animal that everyone always talks about. Not that we necessarily need that or even want that. I don't know how, how it would look. But uh, because there's all these other genes in there, we should get a really cool, diverse clutch. And maybe the all gene animal would look awesome. Low chances of actually getting it, of course. But uh, yeah, I like these pairings that produce really diverse looking clutches with tons of different potential combinations. And I just love desert ghosts in general. But, you know, we don't even know if they're going to pair up. <sighs> Something else I was thinking about that I wanted to share really briefly with you guys um, that I think is important. By the way, that OV right there means I think she ovulated. In fact, with her, I'm, I'm almost certain. But I went ahead and just threw the male in one last time just in case uh, because sometimes the females, they start to swell up a lot before the true ovulation. Um, and so sometimes I've been tricked into thinking, oh, that's an ovulation, and I could have, it turns out, snuck one more pairing in. So even though I'm almost certain she did ovulate, I'm just gonna uh, throw him in just in case, but you know, we'll see. Anyway, nothing crazy to look at, but that is an Orange Dream Yellow Belly Double Het Ultramel Pied, and the female is a Double Het Ultramel Pied this would be an extremely exciting clutch to get. So I hope she did ovulate. And if she didn't, I'm super confident she will. She's shown all the signs for me, you know. She's been bull wrapping a ton, soaking, uh, swelled up, went off of food just a bit ago. Um, but even though she's off of food, she's starting to really swell down to the, you know, the back third of her body or so. Anyway, so, um, yeah. I just wanted to discuss ball python breeding with you guys and show you some of the pairings that we're doing. We have some, some really exciting stuff. Um, I, I don't think that we are the best by any means, <laughs> but uh, we have learned a lot over the last eight years of doing this, and I like to share it with you guys. I know that a lot of you who watch the channel do really enjoy ball pythons, so I tried to... Um, film this during the day for once so the lights are on and you can see what's going on usually it's late at night when we film um, but I wanted you to be able to see some of the pairings that we're putting together while I chat about our breeding season um, there's there's a ton of things that go into this guys I could I could talk forever about this I don't want to make this too long of a video one thing that we've mentioned a lot before on this channel is uh, if a, a weather system comes through you know, rain or snow, depending on where you are, drop what you're doing and put your ball pythons together. <laughs> Even if it breaks your, whatever schedule you're on, they are far, far more likely to lock uh, in that sort of, I, th I can never remember if it's high pressure or low pressure, but whichever pressure, the barometric pressure that comes with rain or snow, they like it. And they will be much more willing to breed during a rainstorm or a snowstorm. Um, even though obviously it's not raining and snowing inside your house, they can sense the barometric pressure and they, they, uh, I don't know what it is about it exactly. If maybe, you know, these bottom of the food chain type animals, uh, are safer coming out to find a mate 
during a rainstorm when lots of the predators might be hiding and not out actively hunting. I don't know, that's just a, a random idea, but uh, for whatever reason, they definitely, definitely are more likely to lock if it is raining outside. So yeah, that's just another little tidbit that I have learned over the years. And that is all for now. Um, I think that, uh, oh, there's one more I wanted to show you, sorry. Real quick. And again, I just put these together before I started this video, so very few are actually like locked yet. But uh, this is a flame female named Vulcan. And this little feisty pants here is a spot nose calico VPI Xanthic. And uh, his name is Voldemort. They have locked many times as well. Both still eating great and all that. But uh, yeah. So now, that is all. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed. I certainly like just going through and looking at the ball pythons, all the different morphs. Sorry, big guy. Go ahead and do your thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, we are the Reptile Barn.